All right, so where we last left it here, um, we created this function that its purpose is to get the first word. Based on what the person typed, we're going to extract that first word. And the first part here is, if it's just a single word title, okay, do nothing about it. If it's a multi-word title, only grab the first word. That's basically what that's saying. Grab the first word of whatever they typed and return it. Okay, well, this that we're going to use uh, is going to be actually run in the following function, the prep comic. So we've written this function. It's going to be used in this next function, prep comic. Here is where we then start to capture all of those input fields, then manipulate them and massage them, and then pass them eventually to save them in the database. So three functions to take care of these three different steps of the process. We could technically do it all in the one function of save comic, and that would probably work. Uh, but one way of programming is to specialize various tasks in various functions. You could do it all in one big function and it'll probably work, and if that works best for you, if you think that way, great. But here I'm breaking it up into little pieces where hopefully, especially if you're kind of newer to programming, it makes sense in that this thing has a specific task and something's not working, so let me go to that piece of the code to try to figure it out. It's not working capturing the first letter, the first word. Well, let me go to the function that's, that's set up to deal with that issue. OK, the next issue of actually capturing the data. Here's where we're going to create a bunch of variables based on all of those input fields. So we're going to start with var dollar $val in title equal to dollar selector quotes pound in title. Let me just before that, let me just double check. Actually, let me show you something cool here. Um, the index HTML. Uh, I want to look at two documents at once, right? Uh, because I'm trying to capture here the 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 name of the of that. If I want to look at two things at once, uh, you just like Notepad++, you can right click a tab and select a horizontal or a vertical group, tab group, so you can look at two documents at once. I need to do it for the moment because I forget what these things are called. Uh, but there we go. So I can see uh, my JavaScript on one side and my HTML in the other. So just right click your tab and if you want, you can separate them into multiple views. Right click and put them back if you want. And then another cool thing is if you ever notice this little divider here at the top, you see this little divider at the very top here, you know, the up arrow and this divider. If you scroll this down, that'll show you the same document in two different views. Whereas you can be looking at your code up on line 2 and line 22, 202 at the same time. If you take this divider up and down, lets you do that. We don't need it at the moment, but if you need to look at two parts of your same code, line 100, line 1000, you can divide up that. In my case, I don't need it, I'm just letting you know. But what I do need is uh, viewing both of these files at once. Okay, so the point here is, um, variable val value of the input field title search for the in, search for the id search for the element with an id in title and give me only its value dot val dot val parentheses comma Next line, I'm chaining the var, no semicolon, because I'm creating another variable based on that one, comma, another one, another one, another one. If you do var, end of line, semicolon, then yes, you need var, next item, semicolon, 
of our next item. And that works as well, but it's a little more efficient technically if we uh, use the one var multiple times, because you only write it once, and um, less memory usage. But the point of this is we need to spend a little bit of effort here. It's a little tedious, but for all of these, we need to do the exact same thing. That's why I've got two open at once. I've got my input field for in title. The ID and the for and the name are all exactly the same. But if you want to be obvious, what I'm getting at is right here. That input field has a, an ID of in title. And right here, we're searching for pound in title. OK, there's my input field for the title. Input field for number, input field for year. Create a variable of the value of that input field. Give me the value of that input field, comma. Give me the value of that input field, comma. So do that for all of these here. I'm going to do it also, but you should see where we're going here. We need to create these variables for all of these input fields in title, in number, in year, in publisher, in notes. Val, and all with the exact same syntax. Dollar $val in year is equal to dollar selector, quotes pound in year dot val. comma, next line, val in publisher, equal to dollar selector quotes pound in publisher dot val. And lastly, val in notes, equal to pound in notes. That one end of statement, semicolon. Now I know people are going to make this mistake, so please look at this. Var, comma, 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 semicolon. If you make this mistake and call me over, I'm going to make fun of you. <laughs> make sure these are commas. Do you need the dot vowel for the notes? Yes. I'm going to make fun of myself, yes. Right there. So uh, yeah, we want commas at the end of all of these because we're using var one time. If we have a semicolon, if we have a, if we have a, sem if you put a semicolon at the end of all of these, your var is missing right there, and then I'll make fun of you. Semicolon for the last one. So this function prep comic is about to prepare the data. We are checking what is the value of all of these fields, saving them into the appropriate variables. Well, val in title is what is storing the name of the comic. And the name of the comic could be The Amazing Spider-Man or Superman. We have that whole function, get first word, to deal with that. So next line. We'll type a new variable here. We'll type temp, tmp, id1. We need to see what was written in the title and deal with it either being a single word name or a multi-word name. We need to temporarily futz with the name of the title. So we can say here, temporary version of the name or the title of the comic. I, we called it name on, on the top. I guess we should have called it title of the title of the comic. The name of the comic. And I don't need to look at my other document at the moment. So that's a TMP capital I capital D1. This is set to function get first word, 
comma. We are going to run a function, and the result of that is what's going to be saved in temp id1. Well, our get first word, that's exactly what we're doing up there. Get first word is going to check is there no empty space? Well, then just return the name of the comic. Or else there is at least one empty space, so therefore only subtract, give me a substring of the first word and return that. So here we are, this is completely valid in that we are saying, let's make a new variable based on this function. Well, this, fun this function is returning a string, a value. But first, we need to feed into, pass into, get first word, we need to pass into a value, the name of the comic. Dollar val in title. Over here, we are checking the value. What was written? into that input field, store it here. Here we're saying, OK, let's check what the first word was. Let's get the first word. It will do its thing, and it will return either a single title, single word title or a multi-word title and store it temporarily here. <coughs> One more thing here, dot to uppercase. OK, here's another bit of complication. Again, we know how this should work, and we have the idea in our minds. But internally, remember, uppercase and lowercase are different. And so that's going to cause us problems if a person today decides to write The Amazing Spider-Man with uppercase letters, and next time they don't, and they write it lowercase. That would technically be two different values, uppercase S, lowercase s. To simplify it all, turn it all uppercase. We will store a version that has not been turned to uppercase, of course. But here we have a version of the title that is only the first word set to uppercase. Next line, temp id2. This is the version of the title complete and uppercase. This version of the title is only the first word. The, an, of, your, you know, whatever the first letter of the title is. Temp ID 1 is the first letter. Temp ID 2 is the version without any extra you know, extraction. It's the, first, it's the complete name of the comic. But it's been turned uppercase, because we're going to need to compare things. And it's more annoying to compare uppercase A versus lowercase a. We turn it all uppercase A. Comma. Next line, temp ID 3 equals nothing. Double quotes, nothing, no space in between. Temporary versions of the title. ID 1, only the first word, uppercase. ID2, the whole name, uh, uh, the whole name, uppercase. ID3, temporary, oh, actually this is new version of the, of the name without the first word. We don't know what that is yet, so it's, it's, un, it's undefined at the moment. But all of this is because we, we, we need to care about alphabetization. We need to ignore those common articles. So we have three temporary versions of the of the name of the comic.
next line a switch to check for existence of a the etc and remove as necessary so uh, I'm going to start with a uh, and the I'm going to start with those articles which are commonly ignored when alphabetizing in English obviously we can program this to be in any language we we'll start with English first so we've dealt with switches before Looks something like this we have a case So we've got this switch. We have is the first word of the comic the? Is it a? Is it whatever we want? We'll start with these two. Um, default is in case it's one that, uh, that we didn't think of. This is the syntax for our switch statement. We have three versions, ID 1, 2, and 3. And we need to check, did we get a the, or an a, uh, or an an, or whatever we decide. So which of those three should we use to, to check, did we get a the, an a, uh, or whatever? ID 1, 2, or 3. ID 1. Temp ID 1, our switch here. Temp ID 1 is what we're using to check. Is it a the, is it an a, uh, or is it something else? So in case that first word is the, what I want to do here, this was just temporary. I wanted to say console log comic has the in title. The case for A is comic has a in the title. Break is comic has none of these. It doesn't have the or a uh, in the title. we should be able to do a little testing 
Um, at this point, we should be able to save it and run it and get a little feedback. It's not there yet. But we should be getting a little feedback if we go to the Save Comic screen and start to type something. Try to test it out. Type the Spider-Man and see if it... Yes? Oh, double semicolon. Thank you. On both. Okay. Um, we should be able to test it and see... Uh, try typing in the names of some comics and try typing the or a uh, and see if your console tells you, we see the the, we see the uh. Try to type in a comic without the or uh. Try anything else besides the or uh, and see if it tells you the third option there. The comic has none of them. We can pause here to see if this works, just to see if our code works. We've typed a lot of code, but we haven't been able to test it until now. Remember, maybe before you actually run it, try to do view error list, see if anything pops up there. And if you're getting this Cordova not found, I've said before, don't worry about the Cordova warning. It's just a warning. My error list looks fine here. I'm going to save all and then run in the browser. I'm going to try. I'm going to give this a shot to see if this is working so far. A lot of moving pieces. You see my console. So try to open your console right away before you do anything. Don't waste your time trying to do something. Then you open your console. You had an error a minute ago. Open your console right away. Nothing's wrong here. This fave icon, don't worry about it. I've signed in. I'm going to go to save comic. I'm going to type the amazing Spider-Man number 1, 1963. Save. Function save comic event is running. Um, Oh, one more thing. Well, um, all right. Here's what's missing. <clears throat> the um, this whole uh, prep comic never has run uh, because we're saying over here in the event handler run save comic. Save comic simply prevents default and says the the function is running. Okay, one quick way to test it. Prep comic inside of save comic. It'll need to be there eventually, but we'll put it in we'll put it in now. This should be enough for us to test it. Um, in the save comic, we're also saying prep the comic. Prevent the default console log, prep the comic. We haven't actually saved the comic. But now we should have some feedback in the console. Did you change this code? Say that again. Did you add something to the code? Yes. What I just said was you need to add the function prep. You see here, this function save comic didn't have function prep, therefore nothing happened. So just put function prep comic into function save comic, and it should start to give you feedback. Let me check on mine here. I'm going to run that. F12, no problem. Save comic. I'm going to save a comic. Output. First it says, a multi-word title. Yes, I wrote The Amazing Spider-Man. Comic has the. Okay, if I wrote only Superman, and I save that. A one-word title. Comic has none of these. I just wrote Superman. If I write The Superman Chronicles, <clears throat> save a, a multi-word title. If I write A Superman Chronicles, save. A multi-word title, comic has A. The Blob, save. Multi-word has the. So let me back up. Several things were happening. First of all, the uh, get first word. It was checking 
a one word title or a multi word title. Then prep comic was checking here. Comic has the, comic has a, comic has none. If I wanted to include uh, an, an amazing journey, maybe I don't want to use an as part of the name. You could add a case. We'll pause for help in a moment, but case of n. Now it's all got to be uppercase because we set it previously to uppercase. Comic has n in title. Break. This case has to be uppercase because we just set up here. What's the first word? To uppercase. What's the what's the whole name of the comic? To uppercase. So make sure your cases right here are uppercase. If I have it lowercase here, it's not going to trip it. It's not going to find it. No, of course not. There's nothing called the. Even though I call it the Amazing Spider-Man, there's nothing called the. It's T uppercase T uppercase H uppercase E. So now I've added a new case. If the comic has the word an, it should trip it here. It should trigger it and show the comic has an. If that worked, good. If not, let's pause for a moment. Anyone need a little help?
this, uh, this function prep comic. Um, the point of this is that it's uh, checking what's inside of those fields, and then we're checking is it the, is it a, uh, is it an, or anything else we choose. You know, here we can set this up like if we're doing this in Spanish, we can set up, well, did they write el, el tigre? Are we going to ignore L and just focus on the T, tigre? So we can make as many cases as we want and in multiple languages. We make a different case for a different possible article that we need to drop, and then we put it in there, and then it, well, not right there, but put it in right there, uppercase. And then it would find it and say, OK, you've, you've typed L, so we'll ignore that one. Um, next, what comes after this? Well, we've dis we've We've identified the the word we want to ignore. So the whole point is then we've got this temp ID three. This is the version of the name of the comic without the word in question. We are going to save a version with the complete unchanged name, of course, but we're also going to need to save a version that has been simplified for alphabetization. Again, on the surface, we see that it's perfectly aligned. The Spider-Man is next to, you know, alphabetically the correct way. But we have to program a version that deals with that. So we'll deal with the first. After our console here, we're going to say temp ID 3 is equal to temp ID 2 dot replace. Inside of replace, we're going to say quotes the space, actually, the with a space. Make sure there's a space right there. Quotes with no space. Replace, what it does is replaces text in a string using a regular expression or search string. Okay, so um, we've got the complete unedited title in temp ID 2. We've got only the first letter of the name of the comic in temp ID 1. So here in temp ID 3, we're saying, okay, we know that the word the is in the title because we're inside of the case of the. Um, we're saying in the full unedited name replace any instances of the with the space with nothing. Take out the word the and the space. The space Amazing Spider-Man. This has caused us so many problems in the past so again make sure it's the space because that space also takes up a space. We're going to replace the Amazing Spider-Man with just amazing and saving that in temp ID 3. Next, we're going to say also temp ID 3 again equal to this will look redundant, and I'll explain. Temp ID three dot sb sub str substring zero comma three. We looked at substring before, which was extracting the first word of the comic. When we had substring before, up on the get first word actually I was gonna say I can't show it twice but actually I can if I divide it like that so up here where we had the the first instance of substring up here we extracted from the first word to the first instance of the empty space the word the over here uh, we're setting up this ID uh, to be the unique identifier for the data in the database. Remember I said that in pouch we have to have an underscore ID. We have to have one field in our JSON data that is unique. 
from everything else. So here, we're going to get the first three letters from 0 to 3. So 0, 1, 2, excluding 3, the first three. We're going to get the first three letters of the uh, version of the comic without the. So Amazing Spider-Man, this is going to extract AMA. -A. It's going to save the words AMA -A here. Because we need to um, have a unique identifier for every comic in the database. And you may think, well, there might be more than one comic that starts with AMA. -A. Yes, I know, we'll, we'll get to that. But that's what we're doing here at the moment. So let's write some notes. What we're saying here, we're saying here, first, update temp title without the word the and the empty space. So we're taking out the word the and the empty space here first. Second, we are uh, then only keep the first three letters of the, of the cleaned up title. Only keep the first three letters. This is basically what that's saying. Only keep the first three letters from the zeroth to the third, excluding the third. Very similar to what we did up here. From the zeroth to the first instance <coughs> of the empty space. But here we know we only want to keep the first three letters of the name of the comic. To see this in action, console log temp ID3. If you save this and run this, test it by typing the Superman. And after it does its thing, it should show you in the console only SUP. It's going to ignore the, and then it's only going to extract the first three letters of the comic's name, SUP. If you save you know, the blob, it should only extract BLO, all uppercase, the first three letters, because it's ignoring the. If you type a blob, a blob, it won't do any of this, obviously, because it would go into case A, which we'll do in a moment. It'll be similar to that, actually. You can try testing it a little bit right now, just to see if your code works so far, and it should get, uh, like I said, what I'm, uh, what I'm expecting. Just the first three letters, all uppercase, of the name of the comic. If you called it the <coughs> something. Check mine. I go to save a comic and I write the spider and I save. Comic has the and it extracted only SPI. Type the blob. Save, it only finds BLO. The Adventures of Superman. What will it, what will it extract? ADV. ADV, let's check. Save, ADV. It's ignoring the, because I'm in the whole case of the. And it's only extracting the first three letters. Then obviously, if I don't put the, nothing will happen there. It'll, it'll realize it's a multi-word title. That's happened before. It doesn't see the, or a, or an. So we're in case default. 
an amazing adventure. Comic has un, an, but nothing else is extracted because we haven't done that one yet, which we'll do now, which is the same thing. But now replacing a with nothing. And then an will be the same thing. So for a, we would do the same thing. Temp ID 3 is equal to temp ID 2. We're replacing a and the space, comma, with nothing. Temp ID 3. Set that to temp ID 3 again, but this time only the substring, sub str, from 0 to 3, console log temp ID 3. What's that? Oh yes, temp ID three. For n, I need the exact same thing, but what changes is there. Replace any instance of a space with nothing. Replace any instance of a n space with nothing. Replace any instance of the space with nothing. And if I'm doing l, l tigre, then I would have case l replace L, E, L, space, with nothing, and then console. To save myself some effort, I'm just going to copy that. And now I'm replacing N, and it's got to be uppercase, with nothing. And now this should trigger if I save something with the N or A. It'll ignore it with the default case. What I want for default then, these three cases deal with those three particular articles in the sentence. Default case comic has none of these in the title. So what we're saying here then is temp ID 3 is equal to only temp ID 2 substring from 0 to 3. It is an ID 2 here. We don't have to deal with ID 1 because ID 1 is, uh, remember ID 1 has only the word the. And we don't need to replace anything. We don't need the replace. We don't need replace here. We're not dealing with a or an or the, so nothing to replace. We're not dealing with the substring of number three. Well, number three is the replaced version. Here, nothing is replaced, so we go straight to ID2, the first three letters of the unedited title. Save them. Console them. Log them. ID two. No, oh, sorry, ID three. Since no replacement words happened, extract from the unedited version of title. The unedited version is temp2. And so we've got these different cases, and none of this happens unless we trigger a case. So even though we said the same thing three times, none of these happen unless a case happens. We break, nothing else happens. 
So it's okay that, we're, that we were using type temp ID2 here, even though over here we said we replaced it. No, we never replaced it because the case of default triggers nothing else. So jump straight here, get the first three letters of the unedited title, put it in temp3, log temp3. Now you can save it and fully test it, type names, put, put the, put and, put nothing, put one word, put three words. This is the part of this testing. Uh, try different things now. Don't just type the same thing over and over. Think about as a person. What would, it, what would a person type? Me that we're program us that we're programming it. We have an idea of how it should behave and how it should look. And now think in terms of the user. Write way write things in different ways. Try to break it. Try to try to create something weird. If you get the result you expect, try to create an unexpected result. Well, you know what they say about unknown unknowns. So that's what the beta testing is. Well, actually, we're in alpha testing right now. But let's check mine here. At the very least, I should be able to hit those four possibilities of the title of the comic. Now, what I'm also going to do is just clear my console so that I have it clean. And again, I'll write the blob. I, I should know this one should work. I've done the before. Okay, the that's working. Clear it. Type a uh, blob. Actually, for fun, a uh, the blob. Sure. Save that. There's an a in the title. It found the the. Obviously, I'm writing something that doesn't make sense, I guess. But it found the first three letters past my a. The. We're like, why didn't it go all the way to blob? Well, I didn't program it to think about that. It only, I only programmed it to find the first word, which is the in this case. So that's not an error, that's just something to think about, to fix later. A blob, comic has a, BLO, first three letters. N, amazing blob story, number one, save. Multi word, found N, found AMA, it skipped N. The amazing blob story. Multi-word found the found AMA. And like I said, uh, and the well, it's all three of my possible bad words. And I save that. It found n the second word. If you even test it a little bit more, what if I do the? Space, 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 save. Comic has the. Oh, it broke. Did it? Nope. There are three empty spaces right there. You see them? They're right there. One, two, three. One, two, three. So it, uh, it did find three. <coughs> it went past the one empty space and then it found all of these empty spaces because spaces are not nothing spaces are something and it found substring from 0 to 3 0 0 1 2 and it put it right there blank 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 so those are things we'll deal with but again these are things that as you test this stuff I put two spaces there an accident as you test it, hey, it only did AM. No, it did space AM. And these are things that we will fix, of course. But these are the things that, as we test this, we figure out all of these little weird aspects and bugs and such. And this is why people, uh, this is why websites get hacked or apps get hacked, because people are messing with, with, the, with the app. And forms are often the number one attack vector uh, to to try to break something because what if someone wrote erase dot database pouch db I'm making it up of course but what if they wrote what if they try to write JavaScript in here at the moment it'll say great your comic is named erase database pouch db and it says that there's no 
none of the forbidden words, and it found ERA. ERA. So that's something to deal with as well. These input fields could uh, have malicious code plugged in. There could be, you know, the real command here. Let's let's make our brand new database DB2 equal to new pouch DB. This is a real command here, right? Save that. It found VAR. So we'll deal with that later. It's not actually running real code, uh, but this was a common way to hack a website. Try to put in JavaScript into input fields, and if they're not properly fortified, it will process the JavaScript and give you access to, to the back end. That's a topic for another day. But at least for the moment, it should be finding the and a uh and an and the and any names you want, any articles you want to use in your code here. So, so far we're still preparing our data. And that's what always happens when we get to this point. This input is very important to get right because eventually when we save it to the database, we don't want to save bad data. We don't want to save corrupted data or compromised data. So we need to prepare the data first. That's the whole point of function prep comic. <clears throat> so we're going to do lab in a moment questions up to this point. So what should be happening, like I said, it should be finding that it that you wrote the or a or an. It's not saving to the database yet. We haven't gotten that far. Uh, but again, to be fully testing it, uh, you also want to look inside of your F12, your, your developer's console application, and it should, in your index DB, if you, if you did that part right, it should be saving the name of the database. Nothing's in the database yet. I'm currently logged in as cat at dog, and inside of that database, by sequence, is nothing. Nothing's being saved to the database yet. We're still preparing the data. But I've got databases to save data to. I've got bases, but no data yet. That'll be next time. So let me uh, put my code into the folder, and we'll have some lab time.